Hey, what's up guys, Aaron over here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 70 today for the Brazilian Grand Prix in Season 4. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Mexican Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one. It uploaded just before Christmas Day, but here we are then. It is crunch time. The final three rounds to go. Brazil, the new track Jeddah for the very first time in My Team Career Mode. That that's going to be a massive unknown. And then we have the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix at Yas Marina. But Sao Paulo, it's, uh, well, bittersweet coming back here, of course, you know, from season three, the location of the, of the finale of last season and the place where I lost the championship to Lando Norris by such a fine margin and such an unfortunate series of events was it at the start of the Brazilian Grand Prix. And then also just a, a tough race in general to lose the championship to after such a long battle uh, consistently with Lando in season three but it's not the finale episode today it's the third last race so maybe the pressure is going to be a bit less I mean we are on the back foot though we're the ones chasing after the, the the pack as it were the pack being two drivers of Jensen Button and Pierre Gasly Button retook the lead of the drivers championship with his second win of the season and becoming the only driver so far to get two wins in the season up till then it was obviously a different winner in every single race. Gasly came home in second. We limped home for fourth, remember, with the floor damage. So we trail a few points to Gasly. Gasly only two points behind Button. So at the moment, in the media, the focus will be on Button and Gasly. Hopefully that takes the pressure off me and I can try and do my best. But as I alluded to at the end of last episode, I've never been great around Sao Paulo. It is a bit of a bogey circuit for me in terms of, you know, especially through the first two turns, the AI I've always had immense acceleration out the center S on the F1 games compared to myself for whatever reason. And in general, races can be very tough around here. And just like in real life, overtaking can be difficult. And, you know, it's hard to sometimes tell also, you know, the strategy play, you know, when rain is involved, as it always is sometimes around Sao Paulo. And also just the tire wear with the dry compound tire. We've had, you know, instances of, you know, the hard compound being the better race tire, the medium being a better one, the softs as well, as we've gone through the F1 games. Games. She just can never tell around here, but I guess that's why we love it as one of the last races of the season because it is a massive unknown and can chuck anything up. But at the moment, what it is chucking up is Gasly and Button 1 2 in Q1. We're there in P4. Verstappen, though, looking pretty quick in the Mercedes, so he could be a spanner in the works. But kind of nice to see myself, Button, and Gasly all up there looking strong. That's the part you want to see, obviously, in these last three rounds. But like I said, you know, Verstappen's up there. We're going to have to see about other the cars as well because you know they're all racing for crucial points in their constructors battle so it's not all about us and so we could find other people not in the championship fight in the middle of our race as has Fantastic. always been the case obviously we're having so many different round. winners this season but at the moment trying to get through into the top 10 shootout we do so button lacking a little bit of pace there in the second part of qualifying Verstappen looking really strong in this second part and also Bottas surprising me because Williams both Williams cars were down the order in Q1, but Bottas showing that Williams is very much a car here to stay at the sharp end, especially in the hands of himself. Gasly, though, right up there. The two Red Bulls are through. And Lando and Leclerc, respectively, for McLaren, Ferrari, Sonoda through as well. So both Alpha Tauri's through, but Gasly looking the quicker man once more. But now here we are, the first flying lap, and we dip a tyre onto the grass by a small inch. That makes us lock up, and we lose a bit of time there as the car was going a bit wide. We narrowly just kept it within the confines of the circuit. And go spearing straight on so that was well uh, clearly feeling the pressure a little bit as I wasn't looking very closely where my right tire was trying to get as wide as we can to you know get a good entry and that's cost us for sure as we go across the line only P4 behind Bottas behind Perez we're down to P8 right now Button is on provisional pole he's at nearly two tenths ahead of Gasly we've got about four and a half tenths to find if we want to try and close up to Jensen and even try and get close to Gasly even and you can see there there you go this time no lock up and we gain nearly three tenths alone on that one corner a further tenth up the hill you're seeing that one mistake was massive for us because it carry you know that momentum carries through the lack of momentum carries through in this sector here at Sao Paulo with the roller coaster sector two and we're now nearly five tenths up lose a little bit of time through that right hand a bit of understeer kicking in we've got Lando going quickest of all as we now get on the curb here 
here in the last sector and we made a huge mistake. The car's across the grass and that's our qualifying over and in the bin. We're down to P10. It's been a disaster on Saturday where we needed the most. We haven't, we haven't performed in qualifying. And Jensen Button, our teammate, is going to grab pole position by all oh my days. Look how close that was. I thought Lando was on for pole because he did go fastest. But I guess Jensen was behind me on track and went again and beat Lando Norris by the tiniest, tiniest of margins. They may as well be on the same grid slot with that. Verstappen P3, Leclerc, Gasly in P5. Sort of a saving grace for us a little bit. That at least one of our championship rivals is a bit further down, halfway down this top 10 shootout but for us in P10 that's a howler that we oh, we have the time in our pocket we would have at least been on the on the front row maybe with a one two lockout with button with that kind of time gained but understeer kicked in for us in that last bit. And then I was just too... Well, I wanted more from the lap. And I just kept my foot in. And we span it on the curb. As I said, Sao Paulo, it's a bit of a dud circuit for me. I've never been that quick around here versus AI. The time was there. But then it's just a bit of a bogey circuit as well. We, we, we've made mistakes here in the past. In crucial finale episodes. Let alone the third last round. Uh, you know, it's, it's a great race track for a finale. It's a great race track for a high pressure Grand Prix in the season. In, but it's one that, you know, sometimes are not being great at. We're going to try and make up for it now. We're going to make up for this mistake down in P10 for Sunday's grid. Let's go to the race. Welcome along then to the place where heroes and history are made. It's where the 2008 title was decided in the final corner. And it's the place, a year later, that Jensen Button stormed through from 14th on the grid to claim his one and only Drivers' Championship. It's into Lagos. And it's time for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Interlagos, always a very special race here in Brazil. It's a 2.7 mile circuit with nine lefts and six rights for a total of 15 corners. The fastest lap today should have an average speed of around 135 miles per hour. If, of course, the weather stays dry until the end of the Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson, a lot of talented drivers out on the track today, but what will stand out for you? Well, Crofty, my focus is 100% on the front of the grid. Like you said, we're seeing lots of strong competition across those positions, so it would be super interesting to see the fight for that front spot. Personally speaking, I'm hoping for plenty of overtakes. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday and will start from pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, he'll start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Gasly, Valtteri Bottas and Mick Schumacher, Sonoda, the owner driver, Hamilton and Jensen Button. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Perez, Sainz, Daniel Ricciardo and Russell, Ocon, Giovinazzi, Callum Eilert and Nicholas Latifi. Joe, they've taken a grid penalty. Stroll, Matsushita and Christian Lungard. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Well, there's another twist to this tale because the pole man Jensen Button will not line up on pole position. Lando, the reigning world champion, will be on pole at the place where he won the championship quite nicely last season because Button had a penalty, grid penalty. He's down to P10. We actually start in P8 because there's also someone else there. That I can't actually pick out who had a grid penalty as well. I think it was Perez, maybe. Uh, so Button is down in P10 now. He takes my grid slot. We move up into P8. We've got Gasly on the second row. So this now plays into Gasly's hands. He's only two points behind Button. And he's now well ahead of him and myself. So this plays into the Frenchman. And Alpha Tauri there. You know, we've got some quick cars in between us. The Williams is one I'm worried about. Because so many times before, cars have got stuck behind the Williams. Because they can't overtake it in a straight line. So we're going to watch out for that one. And, uh, well, we're going to go a bit aggressive. The, the Brazilian Grand Prix is a bit of a confusing one. 
still to this day, not too sure the quickest way to go about it. Because sometimes, you know, the, the two stop is the better way. You can clearly see it's the faster way. But then also at the same time, because it's so difficult to overtake, even in the F1 game around Sao Paulo, it's difficult to overtake. Track position can sometimes be enough for you. But, you know, we've had a few ups and downs last ep last season. There was rain, so we didn't really know how that went. You know, with the max start cars, you know, what's the strategy going to be like compared to what we did in Season 1 and Season 2? I think Season 1 we had rain. Season 2, I don't think we had a very normal race around Brazil either. But, I mean, no race is really that simple around Sao Paulo in real life and in the game as well. Rain is always a threat. Looks like it may stay away today, but we've got a bigger threat of Gasly on the second row. We've got Button behind us, but we've still got a lot of work to do here to try and make up ground in the championship following the last episode. So here we go then. Three rounds to go. Sao Paulo, the place where we lost the championship last season. Forry lights are out and we're on the way. It's an okay start versus Sonoda. An even better one for Button. Down the inside, JB with a massive dive. He's overtaken both of us, myself and Sonoda. And he's also got Bottas and Schumacher. Button with the biggest kamikaze dive I've seen from an AI still. We've got Gasly into P1. How's he done that from the second row? We've got some huge, huge opening corners from our two championship rivals. We're still here in P8 there looking at the back of Schumacher. What has gone on? I've never seen AI this aggressive. Button and Gasly in a world of their own in terms of pace here on the opening lap. Button's up into P4 from P10 on the grid. He's got Leclerc as well. We missed that somewhere. I think he overtook him whilst I was looking at the back of Schumacher and Bottas. We've got Schumacher now as we made the dive up the hill into Sector 2. But Gasly leads the way. And this is how from P4, Lando with a really slow start. Verstappen comes through to kind of try and overtake. And Gasly... Just, he just goes down the inside and gets a jump on the outside into the center S. Really nice move from Pierre. And he's up into P1 pretty simple. He got Leclerc straight off the line. And I think Verstappen was basically too busy watching where Lando was. As you can see, Lando got a poor exit off the five red lights on pole. There go, well, there's Gasly then. And then Verstappen gets pinched in because he's still got to give Lando room on the inside. And so has to give up the position to Gasly. So Gasly into P1 of this race and in a really, really great position. This is Button. He got a much better exit than I did. Acceleration off the five red lights. And then what a dive bomb from him on Schumacher uh, and Bottas. I thought I got a, pre I got a pretty good exit off the five red lights because I was actually alongside Sonoda, but Button got an even better one because he got the car alongside him, he got me and Sonoda, he got the two cars into turn one, and then went on to dive bomb Leclerc as well. This is the onboard from Schumacher, look at that. Look how far he came back from. Button with a sensational move into turn one, a crucial one for his championship and maybe one that is going to be a dagger into the main heart of my championship bid because we're down in P7 and we've got our two rivals, the people we need to be ahead of. They're both in the top four now. We need to get a move on as we now watch on Bottas looking to make a move on Leclerc. Can we catch them both napping and get a two for one maybe into sector two? Bottas, bit of contact with Leclerc. There's some space, but it closes and we get the door shut on us by Bottas there. Bit of contact made and I'm really worried right now as we go up the hill there's a little bit of understeer and you've got to remember simulation damage it's affected so many AI this season it was maybe bound to be my turn I think we've got damage careful with the front wing you've taken some minor damage yep just as I feared this is catastrophic that was the tiniest bit of contact with Bottas but that is the simulation damage for you we've, we've spoken about it affecting AI so many times this season and we've actually steered clear I've done quite a good avoiding job, you know, somewhat, uh, you know, from little foible touches like this, but this was just, well, I was impatient because of the moves Button and Gasly made. I thought oh, we had to get a hurry on. Ironically, this is the same corner, the same place last season in season three, where I thought the same thing, where I need to get a move on, get a hurry on, wasn't it? When I tried to overtake Gasly around the outside in the wet and I, and I came a cropper with that massive incident. This time, not as massive, but still as crucial because that's, you know, a bit of damage that's going to affect me. We're still hobbling along because if I make a pit stop this early, we're going to struggle even with a two stop, let alone trying to make a one stop work and then we need to give ourselves some sort of chance at the end of this race. Bottas is overtaking
Mike and Leclerc. And the good thing is, in a straight line, my car's still pretty good. It's just in sector two, we're losing some time. You can see purple first sector, purple the last, because with DRS as well, this car is flying and catching up with the Ferrari, who we know is not that great in a straight line. You can see every corner, we're losing some time, but lap five, and we're not lost too much pace. I mean, you can see there's a big gap from Bottas to the rest of the guys, but we make a big big move on Leclerc and we just narrowly make that work but we do no contact made with the Ferrari man up into P6 like I said there's about 3.5 seconds to button considering we have damage that gap from Bottas to button the fact we're this close to Bottas isn't too bad we're actually doing a very very good job at nursing this damage and doing this well but lap 7 as we close up to Bottas use the DRS to get in it you can see though right up this next right hander he's starting to ease away I'm having to lift off just to even well not even make the corner properly because we have to go wide across the white line on the exit there and so now I cave in lap seven we've done enough we've done all we can but having a look at the tire wear now on these soft compound tires I think actually we may gain a bit of time by pitting earlier changing the wing getting on a fresh set of mediums and actually trying to use that as a massive undercut on the likes of Bottas try and close up to the top four so we're going to lose time right now changing the wing but hopefully we regain this lost time on these mediums because I know these AI are going to be stubborn they're going to try and go a little bit longer even though the tire wear is saying probably it's best to pit around now to lap 10 I think uh, you know maybe some of them might go to lap 11 and if they do then hopefully we're going to gain enough time on these mediums which I think are going to be the better race star in this uh, second part and this second phase of the race but whether they go on a one stop or or not, I don't know, but we catch up to the Haas now of Lungard and Mashusita making the moves here. You can see they're going, I mean, the Haas is very slow anyway, but I think they're going extra slow because of their tyres also wearing out. But once we're past this second Haas, we've got a lot of clean air, 5.5 seconds to be exact to stroll, and that's the kind of clean air we're going to need to utilise, get our head down, and try and almost do some qualifying style laps, really try and attack the circuit, take a bit of life out of the mediums in order to actually gain that extra time, because here they are, lap 11. Like I said, they're stubborn, these AI. Gasly, Verstappen, Lando, Button, Bottas, like, oh, none of them, no one's come in yet. And uh, they won't. Gasly continues on. Verstappen, Lando comes in, though. He pulls the trigger. Button does not. So Gasly and Button stay out with Verstappen in the top three. And they keep going. Bottas as well. So are those guys doing a one-stop on the hard compound attire? Yeah, I think they are, because they're going longer. Verstappen, DRS open. Can he try anything on Gasly? No. Gasly has the measure of the Dutchman so far. Lando, he is on the two-stop. He's pulled the trigger. So to be fair, it still may be on for a two-stop for the rest of them because I would have I would have thought maybe Lando, you know, or any two-stoppers would have come in earlier. But the fact that Lando and McLaren are still committing to a two-stop, even lap 11, maybe gives us half a chance. The others may be doing a two-stop. I'm only hoping for that because the one-stop just simply obviously gives them track position. So it's all down to me to actually chase after them on this aggressive strategy and it's not helping us being held up a little bit here by the likes of Stroll you know even one or two corners being held up is going to lose us some time as we get past him even before DRS activated now activated as we now deploy all the battery we have across the line lap number 13 up into P16 on the outside of Eilot and now closing up Despan Ocon Latifi head in the other Alfa Romeo can we get both of them in one foul swoop one straight maybe we looked over take the Alpine we're not going to be close enough to make a move on Latifi and Latifi actually boxes us in and we have to actually do some wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing with Ocon for a moment there to finish the move off. Now we can get onto the back of the Canadian in the Alfa Romeo up the hill. You can see pretty much pushing him through this corner such as the tyre wear he's facing and the deficit of the Alfa Romeo car up into P14. Now chasing after Giovinazzi. Norris, he's up the road. He's, uh, well, eight seconds he's up the road. So you can see that's the gap. Well, he was, you know, in I think P3 uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the top pack. So I think we've gained a little bit of time with him because I didn't see his uh, dot 
on the minimap before the pit stop. Now I can just about see it depending on what part of the minimap we're on. So I think we have gained a bit of time on even Lando, uh, even though he's on the same sort of strategy as us on a two stop as we now overtake Giovinazzi. Now this is the real kicker. Where is Bottas? Where is the likes of Button, Gasly, Verstappen? There is Bottas there on the left hand side. We're going to overtake him. So we've jumped Valtteri. We've jumped the Williams with a great undercut and we've actually gained time on Button. Not too much time, 2.5. So we've gained about a second on Jensen in that entire undercut. But confirmation, Gasly, Verstappen and him, they're all on the hard. So they're going for the one stop. So now this means I have to actually go and catch these three, overtake them, and then try and join this man, Lando Norris, my rival from last season. I'm going to try and join him in stretching our legs and trying to build as much of a gap as we can for that second pit stop. Obviously, it's kind of, in a, in a weird way, it's kind of maybe a mistake McLaren have made that they've uh, made Lando go on a two-stop because he didn't need to. Obviously, I had to because I had to change my wing. I was going to start losing way more time staying out with the wing damage than I was losing time with a second hole pit stop here early on and uh, I think the hard tyre was just not even a, a choice in my head to be honest uh, based on past experiences with the hard compound tyre around Sao Paulo for myself. We've now had the last few people make their pit stop so Lando Norris is in the lead of this Grand Prix then on the soft compound tyre stretching his legs and we need to try and join him and so we're here lap 18 and we're cashing onto the back of Button. We've set the fast lap of the Grand Prix the medium tyre working well for us purple first sector here with DRS now available to us we need to try and make this a really smooth operation surely button doesn't give us too much of a fight we're not in his race right now at the moment we're on a two stop we're down the inside i don't think he waved us through exactly but he didn't make it too difficult for us thankfully and we're up into p4 and now can we try and overtake verstappen and gasly this may be a little more difficult of course because they're not on the same team they may not be uh, looking out for us as much but uh, uh, we have the overspeed we have the mediums that are working well at this stage the hards they're still rubbering in from my from my experience they're still going to be finding it a little bit understeery so let's hope we can use that to our advantage also just in a straight line we should have some good speed here we're actually catching up to Verstappen we saved a lot of ERS for that main back straight here up the hill and so we're actually alongside him as we go across the line there that's more the ERS working well than the DRS there because we saved so much actually too much in fact that we had more to deploy as we crossed the line there but good clever thinking to save the ERS for that crucial moment and then we're going to over use the ERS here on this straight with DRS open. Gasly squeezes us right to the left. We're going to squeeze him back there and get an elbow out as Gasly almost is trying to force us onto the grass. But we get up into P2. Uh, you know, in the end, it's kind of pointless for them to fight too much because they're just going to start wearing their tyres out. But as we go on through this Grand Prix, then a couple of laps later, Norris, remember, on the soft compound. So he comes in earlier than I do, despite pitting later than me because his softs are worn out quicker than my mediums. Now we go on uh, for at least maybe two more laps I'd say to lap 25 to leave about 11 or 10 laps then for the soft compound attire that we'll put on at the end of this race we'll be on the fastest compound with the lowest fuel surely we're going to be setting some purple lap times and closing up to these guys Lando comes out whoa all the way down in P8 you know behind Bottas Hamilton Guan Yu Zhou that is a little bit concerning considering we're about four or five seconds behind Lando and that'll put us out behind Leclerc. So let's see what kind of lap times we can do on the mediums as we carry on. Lando is actually going to overtake Guan Yu Zhou though. So showing the speed of fresh tyres around here. Guan Yu Zhou comes in actually as well as Hamilton I believe. Yes, Hamilton's in as Hamilton and Guan Yu Zhou were also on a two-stop. So a, a fair few amount of you know, split decision between the one and the two today. So there's no obvious way to go about it. There's definitely a clear split down uh, the middle of the grid Bottas though as we know was on the one stop so he is going to be a bit of a mobile chicane I think for Lando and even for myself because I don't think we'll jump those two with the overcut because my tyres now are obviously wearing out as they get to the end of their lifespan and speaking of lap 25 then like I said giving us 10 laps then including the lap we'll come out on on the soft compound attire we're hoping that's going to be enough to not only go and get Lando, get Bottas, but then close up to those three as Gasly takes the lead of this race once again from Verstappen and Button is in P3. Our two championship rivals are on a podium right now. And as we make the pit stop, we make the tyre change onto the soft compound tyre. We're coming out. We are going to be behind Lando and Bottas in P6. 
and we've got all the work to do in our own hand. In real life, we see Lewis Hamilton having to put his faith in Mercedes and his strategist to say a two stop's going to be the better way to go it and they're going to come back in this race. I'm going to put faith in, well, myself and what I know of the game and hopefully try and close up to these guys as we now see Lando go for a move on Bottas. This is crucial for his race as well. Remember, the two are side by side. This is really important for the constructors as well as Williams are wrapped up in a battle with McLaren. Williams are chasing after McLaren in the Constructors' Championship for P3, remember, in the Constructors. So that's really important for their battle as well. Whilst that was going on, on the same lap, we saw Verstappen in a replay go for a move on Gasly. Doesn't quite do it. So it's been pretty stationary up till now, but it's all kicking off. It's finally boiled over. It's heating up. The top guys are fighting, which may help us. But now our rear wing is broken. We have no DRS now. We're going to have to do these overtakes old school as we do set the fast up of the Grand Prix. Lando on the outside of Bottas. Bottas defends so hard and those two lose time to each other. I'm hoping this, this is the same sort of battle we're seeing at the sharp end so that Gasly and Button can lose time with Verstappen. Norris on the outside. Bottas defends again but he can't quite do it. No, yes he can. He pushes the McLaren wide and he's kept P4. We're now coming through on the inside there. Just ERS usage. No DRS, of course. It's broken. We don't have it. This is old school racing for us. For everyone else, they'll have the advantage. But can we just get Bottas in the corners, I wonder? On the outside, bit of PTSD from being squeezed into him uh, on the opening laps. But we're going to make sure we don't get any contact made with Bottas this time. And we're up into P4. Clean air. And now we've got about seven seconds to close up to those guys up front. And whilst I was overtaking those two on lap 28, here we see again... Verstappen go for the lead. This is a great replay. We missed it live, but here we are. Verstappen's in the lead by just half a car length. Gasly comes back at him, though. This is a great scrap for P1 for the race win. Verstappen in the lead. No, he's overcooked it. He went too wide, and Gasly comes back through. And now JB may get second place. This would be crucial for his championship fight versus Gasly, and even more of a nail in the coffin for mine, maybe. He doesn't get it, though. Verstappen and hold stationary in P2 but what a replay this is on the same lap as I was racing Lando and Bottas uh, a, a real genuine fight for P1 there Verstappen gave it his all I don't know what happened he, he was fully in the lead for a second and he went too deep and wide in that corner up the hill and so now well I'm hoping they continue to fight as we pull away from Bottas and Lando who are still embroiled in this fight for their respective teams the constructors battle and we stretch our legs though sufficiently on the fastest compound on the lowest fuel now seven seconds to gain can we do it can we try and close up to the top three meanwhile we watch on lap 30 we've still got Norris v Bottas like I said I was fearful of Bottas and Williams being quite frustrating thankfully we got past with you know well thanks to the soft compound I think because Lando's finding it difficult on the mediums but here he goes now for the third time lucky I think this will be on the inside this time he may just get it no the Williams comes back at him no! That Williams, Bottas, is doing a defensive drive and a half. He is racing his heart out for his team. For the constructors battle here between McLaren and Williams. It's like turning back the years all over again. But Lando gets up into P5, eventually has the overspeed, and now he's got clean air to push on. Meanwhile, at the sharp end, I was hoping they would continue to battle, and Verstappen is helping me out, or trying to help me out, as he has a look around the outside, but Gasly just does enough to defend little bit of a half look on the exit but no Gasly remains in P1 but they've been battling sufficiently that we've caught them up and here we are now halfway through lap 34 we've got two laps to go in this Grand Prix we're on the soft tyre they're on the hards they've been on that for a long long time but I'm just not sure though because we're losing a bit of time now through the exits on these corners they're looking really quick in a straight line I don't know if they've saved extra ERS or what and at the same time maybe my tyres are starting to wear out because as we enter the second last half of the Grand Prix into turn one Norris has now stolen the fast half of the Grand Prix so now he is going quickest of all because the medium has become the better tyre because he's facing less tyre wear so ironically we wanted to go quick maybe 
we've made a mistake. Maybe we should have chosen the medium, kind of, you know, uh, sacrificed a bit of pace at the start of that uh, stint. You know, maybe taking longer to overtake Bottas, longer to overtake Lando, to give ourselves more tyre to work with at the end. Because now Norris is the quickest man. I've lost the fast lap of the Grand Prix. We're closing up. We're so close to Button in the second sector. But we just can't get close enough, even in DRS. We're kind of, you know, facing what Button and Verstappen have faced the entire race. A DRS strain. Sao Paulo, even on the F1 game, is proving difficult to make an overtake. Earlier was a different story. We had such fresher mediums, but now my softs are very much worn as Lando span it. So even the mediums are not that great, apparently. Lando's faced the pressure, and just like he did two seasons ago, in season two, he span it at Sao Paulo in the dying laps of this Grand Prix. What a blunder for Lando. It's a joy for Williams as they're up into P5. That'll be crucial points for the constructors fight. But here we are then on the last lap. I've seen a purple first sector and we're still not closing up to make a move on Button. This is this is not happening. This is horrendous to see. Gasly is still leading this race with staff in second, Button third. We're setting purple sectors. We're closing up. We're literally inches away in sector two. We're getting so close to the rear wing of JV. But I just can't make a move. These guys are so good off the final corner. I'm even saving ERS on purpose for these last few bends to make sure I can push as hard as I can. A little bit of understeer kicking in. We've got so much ERS to use. We can just deploy all the way up the hill. But it's not enough. Look at the acceleration from JB. He saved ERS as well. And so Gasly will come through to win his second race of this season. Gasly wins here in Sao Paulo from the Stappen and Button. We tried to make the biggest comeback on the soft compound attire. The two stop. But they just failed us at the end. Oh my god, this is, this is hard, this is difficult. Another superb Brazilian Grand Prix comes to an end, and it's a thoroughly deserved victory. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. And it's time now for the podium celebrations and how well deserved is this one? This is a team all about giving talented young drivers an opportunity to race and to win. Alpha Tori are your winners here today. Well, Gasly becomes the second repeat winner of this season and will take the lead of the Drivers' Championship, I'm pretty sure. Button as well, well, he'll extend the, the lead he already had on me. You know, we had to beat both these guys and we've been beaten by both of them. So we've done the opposite of what we needed today and we've lost even further ground in this championship fight with two races to go only, one of them being Jeddah next race. I have no idea what the pace is going to be like for anyone because it's a completely new circuit that we've not tried in career mode, let alone career mode with maxed out cars. So I don't know, but Gasly leads the championship by eight points now to Jensen because obviously Verstappen got in the middle of that fight annoyingly for, for Jensen's sake. And so that's quite a healthy lead for Gasly with two rounds to go. I'm 20 points back with two races to go. I don't know. I I I strong. I am strongly worried uh, about our chances. I think this may have just become a two-horse race in the championship, and it doesn't involve me. Button v Gasly. That may be the fight we're looking at because uh, uh, they're just too quick. They're too quick for me. Jensen's been so much quicker than me for most of this season. And you know, Saturdays where I made a mistake, high-pressure mistake like that, I'm, I've just not done good enough when it's counted sometimes this season. The pressure's got to me a little bit, pushing, trying to extract the time that Button's finding. Gasly's been supremely quick this race weekend. Apart from Verstappen annoying him a little bit, he had pretty much that entire race covered from the opening lap. And I mean, I, mean, I nearly forgot the opening lap for both of them was something absolutely absolutely biblical in a way between those two. I've never seen AI be that aggressive with their dive bombs on lap one and not make contact and not get damage. It was mad. Uh, and all of that's meant that, yeah, I'm 20 points back. This is uh, not a position I'm used to, but uh, it is the position we find ourselves in after a hectic and stressful Brazilian Grand Prix. Guys, if you have enjoyed that one, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. What, what do you make of it? Who do you, who, do you, do you rate? Who's your money on the last two rounds? Gas 
Gasly Button and myself. Do you even think I'm even in the fight still anymore? Is it between Button and Gasly? Let me know what you make of it. If you're new around here, do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.